October. <laughs> Halloween is uh, definitely... October is my favorite month, if I have not already said that for the hundredth time here on the channel. So, I <laughs> uh, appreciate everybody coming around and uh, tuning in here. Um, so, let's see. Where, where will we pick up from where we left off? Um, so, just keeping you guys up to speed with everything that uh, I've been working on here. And it has been quite a... I guess you'd say almost frustrating uh, journey trying to get uh, the reloading press back up and running. That's the uh, Dylan 650, which now I think they don't uh, they don't make that one anymore. It's now the 750. Yeah, I can't believe that. You know, it, it just times is, I guess, just moving along. Um, I actually stopped to think about it, and I was like, man, I've owned my machine for 10 years. That is pretty crazy to think that um, just my machine alone, my 650 Dylan, I've owned for 10 years. Um, where does the time go? <laughs> um, anyway, uh, you know, for me, uh, you know, kind of the throwing back to October a little bit here, we'll talk about this uh, because I I'm just so grateful that. I came around at the age I did because it's right before all of this millennial thing took place and it's I mean it, all this stuff now it, it, it serves its purpose um, it uh, it has its point or purpose it things advance but I'm just glad that I got to experience the things that I did because uh, movies for me uh, growing up were a different thing it wasn't something that you just streamed off of the internet for, for you know, whatever. No, this was a, a family thing. It was, um, you know, my mom and myself and, you know, the grandpa and everybody, you know, we, we head down to the video store. We take a look at what's uh, what's new, what what's, you know, what, what has just come out. And hopefully there's, a, if it's a new release, there's still a copy left on video that you can grab and, and rent. You know, they'd have to stock up, like... You know, I remember sometimes, depends on the movie, if it was uh, something really, really good, uh, you know, they'd, they'd have like 20 copies of the thing, you know, and hopefully you were one of the 20 people that got to rent it <laughs> when it came out that night. Yeah. And then don't forget to uh, be kind and please, please rewind because you didn't want to get hit with like a, a dollar rewind charge or something, or I think it was like 50 cents or, or whatnot. Yeah, and I also remember with my father and stuff, you know, we go to the, uh, the you know, the, like the local CVS or Long's Drugs in, in the town or whatever, you know, one of those, uh, you know, type places, you know, instead of, a, uh, you know, what they have now, a red box or whatever outside. No, there was actually an entire section of the store that was set up for video rental. I remember it was 99 cents to rent it. You just brought it back the next day. You know, we rented a lot of uh, tapes that way. And it was so neat because I remember the setup that they had. You go around, you look around all these boxes uh, that they had the little slip covers out there, and they were housed inside of a, a plastic case that would hold its shape. And there was a number on it. So when you brought it back to the uh, to the, the counter, they would look for it by the number. So they'd pull out these drawers that were you know, categorized by number, or whatever, and then they would match the number, pull the tape, and then slide the slip cover into its place, give you the tape, and you'd rent it, and you'd take it home. That was so cool to me. I remember just marveling over that system. I was like, wow, that's really cool that they, they have this set up that way. It, it's like they match these two numbers together, and I don't know, for some reason as a kid, that was just neat. For me to see that was uh, that was pretty interesting but uh, of course uh, you know going through all these stores I would go and hit uh, the horror section and the action uh, section of course I you know go to the action section I I'd rent Rambo or or, <laughs> or Rocky or or one of those or Commando or Raw Deal with uh, you know Schwarzenegger and Stallone because uh, when I grew up, that was it. That, those were your action movies. I mean, you wanted to see blow them up and 
action packed and make sure you go through the whole bag of popcorn because you're so excited. Yeah, you rented Commando. <laughs> I remember. Uh, and then I remember uh, you know, going to theaters and uh, Last Action Hero came out with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Man, that was my favorite movie for a long time. That was it. I mean, it was like, yes, I got to watch The Last Action Hero. And you know, I just remember you know, renting that and just absolutely uh, just watching it over and over and over again. And uh, there were so many of these films I remember, uh, you know, uh, Dolph Lundgren was also, you know, my favorite, you know, cause you had Universal Soldier, uh, that was fairly new. And then, um, there was, uh, one that I always kept looking for, you know, it was, um, Army of One, uh, also known as Joshua Tree. That was, uh, one, another one I would always watch cause it was just, you know, it was just your, that was your typical, uh, you know, just crazy action movie of the eighties and nineties. It was just, uh, you know, over the top. And then um, I remember when uh, his newer one at the time came out, Men of War. If you have not seen Men of War, that's another just over-the-top, uh, crazy action, just ridiculous, cheesy, but, you know, ridiculous. And I still uh, I still search for these. I still buy them. I still look for them and, and own them because, uh, I mean, I'll sit there and I'll watch Rambo 3. Uh, you know, I was just talking about that uh, the last time we were, we were chatting about the, a lot of these and... Yeah, you know, it's interesting how I remember back in back as a kid, I was like, yeah, Rambo three wasn't exactly that good, or I thought it was a little crazy, or, or you know, just not as good. My favorite was two, and I could never figure that out. I knew it wasn't one, but I couldn't figure out if it was two or three, <laughs> which one it was that was my favorite one. But it, it, but actually, um, I you know recently um I watched uh, three again, uh, you know, within the last few months. Now I was like, you know what? Actually, that one's not that bad. Uh, it's actually pretty good, you know. Especially, you know, he's he's got that, uh, you know, he gets wounded, so he pushes the stick out of himself, and then he he puts the uh, the gunpowder in it and ignites and uh, cauterizes the wound that way. I mean, it's really crazy stuff, but yeah, you know, it's a really good movie. I, I thought it was um, really well acted uh, on his part. He was definitely getting you know better at it, and. You know, of course, you, I remember renting Cobra a whole bunch of times. You know, oh, yeah, I got to have Cobra. <laughs> I always remember the Cobra grips. I still I still want to put together one of those. I put those uh, those uh, grips on something. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, everything else comes by. The uh, horror section, I remember, uh, there was a place in town called Video Showplace, and it was a, a cave that they you know walk-in cave that they had the it was a big old it was you didn't have to crouch or anything I, it was more like a I don't know, it, it was neat because it was you go in there it was a black light and then inside there they had everything you know you friday the 13th uh, jaws and uh um i remember looking at uh what was the other ones um creep show you know i remember saying oh creep show look it's got that crazy skeleton on the front and all that and you know it was neat uh, you know this stuff was really cool to me i, I just then it would it would challenge me as a kid like do you dare to watch this one you know and and, and but you know that was cool because back then the box art was everything the box art made you want to rent this stuff the box art was so important the the cover art uh, of a lot of these films back then you know it was just that, that was really important um they've lost that somewhere along the lines they they lost that now some directors still uh capture that and still kind of you know some uh, some of the movies I, I don't know if whoever decides it maybe it's not the director but some some of the movies are still are still kept that way but you know what I, I miss all those days because that that was so different. But anyway, uh, let's get back onto the uh, reloading stuff. And uh, you know, I got that uh, Lee uh, desk mounted or whatever uh, priming system working excellent. I do like it. Um, it does serve its purpose for sure. I'm just going to buy a, a a piece of wood to um, 
another piece of wood because I the wood that I did mount it on I now uh, dismounted the the press from that and put my uh, Dillon 650 back on it because that's what the, the originally that was what the that plank was made for and um, now when I this is uh, of course you know ten years ago when I first bought it um, I learned this from the fellow that uh, that I bought it from. Uh, that he got it for me and taught me everything about reloading, which that's uh, the one thing I must say. I thank him every day um, because he took the time out of his life. He's getting on with age now, but he took the time out of his, his life at that moment to actually teach me. You know, he, um, it was really nice to see that he felt that it was, you know, worth his time and effort to take me under his wing, uh, you know, to take this kid and teach him. You know, the, from the ground up, literally, from the ground up of reloading. You know, I did not just walk into it with a, 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 a you know, a progressive press. I mean, literally starting from a Lee Classic uh, pr uh, uh, little tinker, you know, set all the way up to a single stage to turret to, you know, all that stuff. So it's like, it's interesting. Uh, but he took his time and, and taught me all this stuff. And uh, showed it to me, and, and you know, carefully explained it to me with the patience that he did, and everything, uh, amongst everything else too. Uh, you know, I didn't, uh, you know, I wasn't exactly going on the internet and looking at this stuff. Uh, YouTube really wasn't much of a thing when I was getting started with a lot of this. Uh, you know, Hickok 45 was just some, you know, really not much of a big channel. He had a few videos, but uh, so I, I learned everything. Uh, and this, a lot of it is the upbringing for me. I learned a lot of this hands-on by somebody, um, you know, by an older gentleman that was been around the world, you know, a lot longer than I have and taught me what he knows and taught me that, uh, you know, mistakes that I would make are not the answers. You know, they're, they're, they're mistakes. And he, he taught me those things because it's like, hey, look, I made those mistakes and I'm teaching you to not make those mistakes because I've already done them. Save you the time and money <laughs> and the accidents that could possibly, you know, come along with it. So, but, uh, you know, in the end, uh, you know, I, I always say this to like, you know, looking at everything that I got as far as presses wise, you know, still keeping, I will still stand buy it all the way lee products uh richard lee's products are fantastic i uh, will never hesitate to buy any of his products uh except for that one <laughs> that one hand press i kept reading all those bad things about it that's why i never went ahead and got it but you know what uh in the end his products are so inexpensive that even if it turned out to be not not what you want it's not that much of a gamble. It's not that much of a loss. Um, you know, that little bench mounted um, priming system is fa fabulous. And for less than, you know, $30, I got it off of Amazon. It works just great. Um, all their you know, products. Uh, I, it's crazy to think that, you know, for, for just a small investment and, uh, and I'm just, and I'm trying to say this in comparison to a lot of stuff out there with Lee, you really can get a lot of uh, a lot of good stuff out of it and not be too elaborate and really it's simple uh, the Lee turret press is absolutely simple it's great uh, you know it's not it may not be the fastest you know or as fast as a progressive loader but if you're just trying to do like a box of ammo here and a box of ammo there to take it out and have a little bit of fun with it, it it's perfect and you know the other the other thing to that coin is if you start to get on the progressive press and yeah you know, people and this was told to me early on um yeah you'll save money in you know the per per box of ammo that you make but you'll you won't save money because you'll find yourself shooting a whole lot more and uh, i i just got a, a, a an awakening to that just now uh, a reawakening for it because i of course i haven't been running my press the the dylan press for a while but uh just realized you know hey um i just went down and bought like <laughs> two you know two boxes of 500 uh you know 
cast uh, molly coated bear creek bullets from the local reloading store down here and normally when i was just doing my uh my little uh, turret press you know, i was going through one the, one of those 500 boxes would last me quite a while because i would only go to work and you know maybe shoot a mag or two and that's it you know because that's about all i would make <laughs> now uh you know going out there and you're just kind of going through mag after mag after mag just because you know you now instead of bringing like a you know one box of ammo you're bringing a you know like three boxes worth or more <laughs> so uh and you wind up just you know shooting it just for the sake of shooting it um yeah you know, just you know you get a lot of that trigger time and that's how you get better it really is you know you just uh you get better at it doing that so but uh october um again i just love october i love october so much because uh you know just a lot of it growing up with uh the scary movies and everything and you know i just uh, i love pumpkins jack-o'-lanterns and you know ghosts and goblins and all that stuff i just love it uh you know i remember and i'll never forget um you know watching halloween 4 for the first time ever uh, we rented it from a grocery store videotape seeing it um my dad knew all about it he said go get it he goes that's michael myers go get it. it scared scared me pretty good um later on i remember we rented uh um i don't know now i can't remember if that was before or after uh when i rented the first one and i, I do remember we went to blockbuster and rented Halloween 1978 that was the original Halloween John Carpenter's and rented it took it on watched it and it it didn't frighten me it intrigued me because it was like a mystery novel to me I wanted to know what happened I wanted to know more like okay like you know Donald Pleasance got the guy he shot him but he's gone what what happens now what what happens now i just couldn't wait for the for next weekend to go back to blockbuster and rent part two because i wanted to know what happened and that's what we you know and that was and for me i was like growing up i was like a like a cliffhanger you know i gotta wait till you know next friday you know to get picked up from school with, with for my dad and we go and get get you know get dinner ready to go for the weekend and like now we got to go and uh, let's go rent part two halloween two let's you know so <laughs> and find out what happened there was a few a few things like that um i you know and then i remember at that age seeing uh the texas chainsaw massacre my gosh you know and i remember we were about to watch it too and he said you know now you gotta let me know if it's too scary we're gonna shut it off you know but no, I, I th thoroughly enjoyed it, uh, and it kind of I guess it's a it just different, different kind of upbringing, different kind of a uh, 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 different time, different time period. But now everything is so low. Well, don't do this. Don't do that. Don't say this. Oh, how dare you want, let your child watch that? I mean, just look at the cartoons for Pete's sake. I mean, I I. Yeah, I got my my friends now that are you know the older than I am. You know, the they're they have kids now. Uh, my my long term buddy, you know, he just uh, you know he's got a couple beautiful kids, um, and they're <laughs> I remember going to his house watching the, they're watching these cartoons on TV, and I'm going, what is this? This is not cartoons. I mean, you know, where, where's the Tom and Jerry? Where where's Scooby Doo? Uh, it's so different now it's so like oh you know like how dare that you i swear like i i remember um i was watching uh we were just this was like within just the last you know uh some years uh maybe four years um my friend at the time uh uh we were watching uh her and i were watching this tape or this cartoon and it was it was like literally these these two characters and it wasn't one of the mainstream ones or anything like that it was like they were smoking cigars and gambling and nobody ever thought anything about that nobody ever you know like it's just like you know you watch some of these scooby-doo tapes or 
uh, you know, Tom and Jerry and all that, you know, Tom and Jerry smoking cigars and, you know, drinking booze and getting, I remember there was one episode of Tom and Jerry, like Tom literally got drunk. Um, did as a kid growing up watching that, I didn't go into my mom's liquor cabinet at, you know, it's, you know, seven years old and, and get drunk. Uh, you know, I didn't want to pick up a pack of cigarettes and smoke or, or I didn't, uh, you know, where they, they say now that, oh, because of certain characters in, in those cartoons that were, that were perceived as, uh, you know, racial. I didn't think anything of that growing up. Nothing of that. Uh, nothing of that nature. I just knew that it was funny as hell when Jerry smacked Tom upside the head with an anvil. <laughs> you know? Uh, so it's just, uh, that was it. Yeah. It's, um, I'm just glad that I, I really, I did, I got to live all that and experience it. Just so glad I did. Uh, I wouldn't trade that away for anything. I wouldn't want to be uh, a kid growing up, you know, now I wouldn't, you know, I'm just so glad I was not born in the nineties and, you know, never gotten to experience all of, the, all of what I did during the the late 80s and 90s that I did experience as a kid you know I'm just glad it wasn't uh wasn't just a a little <laughs> a little pinky thing in in a you know in a crib at that time I'm just glad because I feel like it it's just the last of it it really is it's just the last of it I feel like like I, I just what I experienced what I was taught what I learned was the last of good upbringing, good values of the old school ways before everything became, you know, uh, the elders don't know anything, don't listen to them kind of mentality. Um, I don't come from that. I come from that. You listen to your elders because they've been around longer than you have. They know better than you. Now it's, uh, well, my Facebook page told me something different. And uh, I'm going to go with that. Not me. Uh, I'm just different than that. I was raised differently. But um, but no, the <laughs> the getting that Dylan machine um, up and running, and that's why I've been kind of MIA for about a week here now, uh, was not, <laughs> it was just, I don't know. I was putting that thing back together, and I tell you, here's my rule a thumb for you guys. Here's my experience. Don't ever take your Dylan press apart beyond what you need to to change calibers. <laughs> don't do it. Those linkage arms. Don't ever take those off. Don't ever do it. They. I don't know what it is about them, but they don't go back on correctly. I had to gently and carefully take a hammer and a piece of wood and tap those things back together. Um, Dylan, don't know what's going on there. Don't know what how you guys do it. After it was said and done, I completely thought that when when Dylan Precision puts these things together, they must be using a machine. There's got to be a machine that presses these things together. Got to be. There's no way somebody's sitting there by hand doing it. No way. No way. Because it doesn't go back together that way. Um, there's got to be a machine that equally presses it together because the tolerances on the machine are so tight that um, either Wilson Combat taught them or they took <laughs> or <laughs> something. I don't know. Oh, man. But it's up and running. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. And it's definitely manufacturing the stuff I needed to uh, very quickly. So I'm really happy with it. Also, by the way, guys, you know, to keeping stuff in your inventory, uh, like I've always said, you know, there's stuff, there's certain things I always have on hand uh, just for doing this kind of stuff. If you're involved in, you know, just kind of tinkering around with this stuff, you know, like epoxy, leather dye, um, croil uh, for things that get seized up and you just need to open it up right away, you know, or just throw a little bit of that croil in there. It'll, you know, pop it open. Um, but, you know, things like that. And of course, I always have the ballastol. Um, even with a, a ballastol with a needle applicator, you know, for small precision applications with that stuff. But the, uh, you know, the other thing to have 
that I like is SC Johnson's uh, Pace Wax. That stuff is great. Uh, you'd be surprised what you can use use that thing for. I mean, I polished my uh, high power with it really well. It was turned out really fantastic. But uh, the other thing I used it for is there's a little plastic wedge on the reloading machine that where the um, it guides down, and that's what pushes the uh, the lever to relinquish another casing into the track to ready to go. Yeah, you can always put grease on there and everything like that, but um, the grease sometimes it's I don't know. I'm I'm always cautious about going crazy with grease all over my machine because I learned the hard way when I was when I thought Frog Lube was the greatest, latest, you know, wonderful product, and I'm sure it is in in the right way to use it but actually it's funny how you don't really see it around anymore but uh, it turns into like gunk like tar it's not you know wound up not being a very good product for me and so and seal one same thing seal one was the same thing in fact I I think and I hope I deleted those videos from my um, my library in in my channel because I you know that they just turned out that the, that product just turned out to be uh, not so good for me and unfortunately with my you know my Dillon 650 I was kind of putting that stuff on all metal parts on the machine because living in Hawaii you know you kind of want to keep it you know coated with something now granted it did do its job it kept it from rusting but it also gummed everything up <laughs> So, but no, this SC Johnson's Pace Wax, I put it on the face of that little plastic wedge and then, you know, pop, you know, applied it, buffed it off, and it made that wedge, uh, like, have a slick, nice surface. It's working pretty good. So, of course, I'm not going to go and use that Pace Wax for, like, my case lube or anything like that because then I don't know what the long-term effects would be inside the, uh, the dyes. I was using frog lube for that. That's a mistake because the dyes got all gummed up in there eventually. And uh, same thing with like uh, you know, I'll say this Dylan case lube. That stuff is, and I've and I don't know if I talked about this years and years ago on the channel, but um, lanolin and alcohol. That's what that stuff is. It's lan liquid lanolin and alcohol that you can actually go to the, the um, natural food store and buy the lanolin, uh, liquid lanolin, which I've done. Because if you look at the ingredients on the bottle, it even says that that's what it is. But, um, yeah, it you spray it on, it works great, it's amazing. But then after a while, uh, you realize everything you have is sticky. Everything is sticky. The dyes are sticky or your bullets you just made are sticky. They, they will jam up in your, your firearm, everything. It's like, whoa, okay. Um, I just started straight up, uh, well, uh, out here I discovered to only because my job – uh, they where I was working at uh, reloading stuff at one time, uh, making bullets for the company. Uh, they didn't use case lube, which I thought was crazy. I thought that was stupid. And of course, the company wasn't going to spring for any. So to make my job easier, I actually bought my own. And because of the ramifications of all the legalities of everything, you want to make sure you're uh, up and up with everything. So I actually bought Hornady, I believe it's Hornady, uh, one shot case loop. I was using that. That that does work pretty good. It's pretty good stuff. Um, but all in all, what I do is I just take a little bit of ballastol, uh, put it on my hands, and you know smear it around, and then grab my casings and just kind of roll it on the face, you know, the, the outsides of the casings and run it through there. And what I like about Ballastol is it's been around since like 1904. Uh, I'm really glad that thanks to you, you know, um, I got to use it and check it out. And now it's my favorite product. It's uh, what I use constantly and uh, it works. It does. It works. And that's what I use on the casings. I don't have to worry about, you know, it ever gumming up because it doesn't. Uh, I coat everything with it. I clean my guns with it. I, cl I use it for just about, you know, anything that I, that, you know, leather, um, rubber, all that stuff. It even says it on the bottle that you can use it for all this stuff, you know, so. But anyway, yeah, that's, uh, it's good stuff. But that SC Johnson's uh, Pace Wax, not a, you know, not a bad thing to have in the inventory. Really not a bad thing. I bought mine from Ace Hardware. It's a big old can of it. It was like eight, nine bucks. I mean, 
it's cheap enough to where you can keep that in your inventory. You never know, you know, you'll find a use for it throughout life. And I feel like, to, you know, you'll just, you'll just be like, hey, you know what? I'll use that. I'm glad I have it. So anyway, I'll, uh, I'll check you guys out later. Uh, don't forget, I'm actually uploading, trying to get it uploaded. It uh, takes forever from uh, the situation I'm in, currently in. But I bought some bacon from the market that was in the meat section uh, that you where you go to buy like uh, fresh cut meat or uh, seafood yeah I learned this from my co-worker my co-worker told me about it and he's like oh yeah you got to try that well I I made the mistake and tried it um, you know it's a little pricey you know like I think it's like six six ninety nine for a pound of this stuff but I tried a little bit of it uh, originally I was only gonna eat a few slices because of my high blood pressure but I was like I made I made a few extras because it was really good yeah, wrapped up the rest, put it in the freezer. Uh, I'll have to treat it like a, you know, like a treat for later. <laughs> anyway, I'll post that video up as soon as it's done. Thanks, guys. Have a good weekend. Or, well, the weekends, uh, have a good rest of your Sunday.